All right, everyone, it's time for another story here about how Israeli scientists have now reportedly converted an E. coli bacteria into something capable of eating CO2 and creating its own sugar supply for energy thereof. Um, this is a disaster waiting to happen, potentially. The one good thing is that if you were to create engineered bacteria and they get out into the wild, they could end up getting destroyed by other bacteria. And of course, it's not a world-ending scenario. It doesn't matter if there's no carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. The world will still be here. It's just humans won't be. Because CO2 does something important, and as any of you who studied basic biology in elementary school understand, plants need it. If you don't have enough CO2 in the atmosphere, the plants are going to get fucked. That would be really be a problem now because that forms the basis of every food chain that you could possibly be part of. That hamburger just came from some herbivore that was eating grass anyway. Here's what I would say. People who are worried about climate change who say, well, we need to reduce the CO2 content. No, you don't. It's obviously survivable. Look around you. I'm breathing at the moment. Uh, I hate to say this because sometimes this gets called junk science, but it is actually objectively true. If the CO2 level of the world rises, I'm not talking about, well, 10% carbon dioxide concentration in the atmosphere. I'm talking point something percent. It is good for plants. It, it speeds their growth. You will actually end up with more flora on this earth. Uh, I believe there have been studies now showing that the greenness overall of the parts of the earth that are still green, because of course humans are slashing and burning the great forest as quickly as possible, has actually increased over the last few years. The CO2 level rising has not negatively impacted plants at all. You can say a greenhouse effect. CO2 is a very weak greenhouse gas. That's been pretty much discredited. The real problems are some of the uh, uh, gases that are released by heavy industry, largely in China and India, uh, methane, certainly. It's largely from beef production. Yeah, if you are to limit the amount of meat that people in this world are eating or switch to more efficient kinds of meat like chickens or fish, yeah, it'd, it'd be helpful. It'd certainly be helpful. Uh, that doesn't mean that you need to release some Frankenstein bacteria into the wild to eat CO2 that could en endanger the entire world. What would happen is, oh, the humans uh, would still be there. It's just the carrying capacity of the Earth would be far less. Yeah, there'd be mass starvation. And I'm sure that those same people would manage to blame the, the Western civilized world for the problem and say, well, it's obvious. You just need to eat less. You need to eat like an Ethiopian or something. They wouldn't, they wouldn't even uh, blame the scientists. Well, the bacteria work. The CO2 levels are down. Oh, the plants are dying? <laughs> That's okay. You, you need a diet anyway. If people were to curb some of their worst successes, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. There'd be no reason to design such a thing. The idea that climate change is an existential threat, I deny. Doesn't seem to be. Supposedly, it's been happening since the middle of the 1800s. As I've pointed out a million times, the strongest argument against worrying about climate change is that if it is an existential threat, existing science has already established we're beyond the tipping point. Unless you intend to go carbon negative. You can't do it. It's unachievable. Not unless you want to wipe out every piece of industry in the world. By the way, there's a big problem with the, the whole back to nature primitivist thing. Carrying capacity of land in the absence of commercial farming methods, which rely upon fossil fuels, is far, far smaller. Which means that in order to feed everyone in this world, unless you wanted to cull 90% of the population and go back to sub-billion levels, you don't have enough arable land on the world's surface to feed everybody without mechanized farming that uses chemical fertilizers and tractors that require oil. Sorry about that. Yeah, sorry kitty, no more cat food for you. Did you know that, that comes from plants fundamentally as well? A lot of it's just grain binders anyway, which is not exactly the healthiest thing you could feed your cats. They should be eating like a 90% meat diet, but cat food, is it 90% meat or is it 90% sludge. I don't even know. I don't see how you eat that stuff, kitty. I really don't. Anyway, uh, climate change, uh, shlimate change is what I would say. The idea of releasing some bacteria into the wild that could destroy the entire world's <laughs> food chain system by uh, drying up the CO2 source for all the plants. That sounds like a bad idea. Sounds like a really bad idea. By the way, this idea of weather instability is bullshit. Oh my god. There was an extra hurricane this year. Oh, and for the last three years, there weren't enough hurricanes. It's basically no matter what happens, they'll manage to chalk it up to uh, some long-term negative trend caused by humans. What I would say 
is that some combination of sea ice and increased photosynthesis probably creates a counterbalance anyway. The world's CO2 concentration has been higher and lower than it is currently. It wavers around over multi-thousands of year periods of time. It will continue to happen, even in the absence of humans it would. So what makes you think that we can truly change that long term? What if the CO2 level begins dropping like a rock? And what if we start looking at an actual little ice age coming or something? That would be far worse than having a warmer climate. Thankfully, even if you look at the temperature trends fairly recently, in the last you know, thousand years or so, thankfully those of us that are already alive today don't have to worry so much about it, because even if the temperature crashes and burns, figuratively speaking, uh, and we have another ice age, like we won't have to deal with the glaciers. Maybe I won't be buried in Vermont, because during the last ice age, it was covered in glacial ice. And I really, I don't want my body ground into minuscule powder uh, and then deposited a mile below the surface. That sounds, uh, that sounds morbid. I think I'll, uh, maybe I'll have my body shipped to Bolivia and they can bury me in some of those, uh, like, uh, petroglyph-laden areas or something. I'll have put in a tomb in Egypt, and then they'll have a debate a thousand years later about colonialism be interesting. Now to be entirely clear, to get past the more flippant aspect of this video, I'm aware that there are already CO2 munching bacteria that exist. The problem is E. coli is pretty adaptable. E. coli is pretty survivable. And the idea that you could blanket the world in a bacteria that would begin absorbing that CO2. Uh, what happens if we get hit by an asteroid, industry disappears, and then there's not enough CO2 output? What happens if the human population shrinks to 1% of its current level and is pre-industrial again? Well, I guess that those ancestors won't survive for very long. They'll starve to death and they won't even know why. To them, it'll be like, oh, tree dry up. Why tree dry up? They'll be talking like cavemen. They won't even understand that there's a gas around them to support life. They won't even know what air is. I'm getting a little bit off topic at this point, but, you know, you understand it's a bad idea. Um, trying to play God is, is what gets us into many messes. It usually doesn't get us back out. Just look at the uh, atomic bomb. That's about all. Peace out.